Welcome back, everybody. For the last time, today is the last bit of Kirby I have for you all. And to celebrate everything, I'm going to be playing on my 100% file, which isn't really that much different from the file we've been playing on. But I want to show off a fair amount of things that I think I still haven't really actually done. So for starters here, uh, I want to actually go over two little easter egg things that I have become aware of through other people uh, posting about them that I just want to show off just for posterity. And the first one is over in Everbay Coast. Uh, the, uh, I believe the second level there, so I will, I will meet you over there. Okay, so... Here at Concrete Isles, there's actually a really fun little secret that I didn't realize until well after the fact, actually. So I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit into the level to show you show it off quick. So just a ways into the level, pretty much right where you would first get dig for the first time, you might notice there's a whirlpool right over here that's a bit different than the rest. Every other whirlpool in this level will hurt you if you go down it. But this one is over a building. And if we actually follow it and let ourselves get sucked in, there's a little surprise waiting for us. So here's a little challenge room that, <laughs> like, I never really heard anyone talk about until, like, a week ago. You want to get on this get a cone mouth and then we're going to try and jump across all of this raging water with these boxes. Whoops. Well, we're going to try again. That's a that's a oops for me. Carefully now. Perfect. We can break this open and get a nice little payout, and even a uh, nice little capsule. But yeah, um, you know, a, a thing that you totally don't need to know about, that uh, I think it's just really cool. And then after we, we ride this, it's, it just spits us out the exact same place. So that's a neat little thing that you, you didn't need to, to know about, but I thought it'd be cool to share. And I have one other thing to share, just really quick, and that's going to be over at the Frozen Horn section, so I'll see you over there. So all the way back over in Frozen Horns at the D.A.D. boss fight, I want to show off one little thing here that uh, hopefully won't take me too much to actually figure out. We gotta go all the way up to the very top of the uh, entrance of the boss arena, though. Just give me one moment. While we're at it, let's let's take care of these guys. So, there's all these broken pillars leading up to this arch, and the arch is the only thing that's still intact. But, you can actually jump from up here and with a little bit of, a little bit of gumption, which is going to require me to actually go up again, we can actually get up there to that arch. So let's see if we can do that. The perspective's a bit it, a bit of an issue. There we go. So we're up here. We'll try going from here now, I think. But it's really hard to tell. There we are, in relation to that. Keep going. There's a little bit here we can we can jump on. We can go over here, and the same thing's gonna happen with this arch. But we gotta be careful because perspective is a little tricky here. There we go, and then you go up to the very top and you get a blue coin. So yeah, I just, there's so many blue coins. I know I didn't find all of them throughout the game. There's a lot to find. Yeah, I'm sure if you just look up all blue coin locations on YouTube, you'll find them. But I just thought that was just kind of fun to show off. But with that said, there's a few things back at Wildy Town to go over that I still really want to show off. So I'll meet you back there. Here we are again. So, it's been a bit since we've actually gone into Kirby's house. 
So let's actually explore there quick. And here's what a fully studded Kirby game looks like. What do you have to say, Alpha One? Yes, I I have done that several times. Thank you. So you can you can actually you know get some figures on the fireplace mantle there, which I've put you know everyone's favorite character right there. But then also we have all these photos that will spring up as the adventure goes on. So you know the, the top left is I think just beating the game base, and then top right is beating it full and getting Leon back, and then we have a bunch of mini games on the bottom there. And then on the right side over here, the one on the top left is the 100% uh, little screen you'll get when you get everything. You have the Ultimate Cup Z on the on the right there. Man Knight and Kirby for the Man Knight Cup. I believe that one in the bottom middle there is just the normal Ultimate Cup, and then all the Treasure Roads. So that, that is you know a fully decked out house. A nice little uh, home away from home for Kirby. As far as the, you know, the various uh, mini games and such, so I've already shown off fishing. You know, I, I caught the the golden blip blipper thing a while back. This is my my record on this file. I don't quite remember what the file is on the other one, but it's it's probably about the same. And as far as the other uh, mini games go. I just want to briefly show them off because I don't think there's really that much to really, really do. I know I showed off the initial gig with Help Wanted, but I don't think I ever showed off Hustle or Frenzy. So I will, I will just begrudgingly kind of show them off just be, just to ha hit full circle, you know. This one shouldn't be a big deal, but actually just completing it isn't that bad. Food service really isn't my, my preferred occupation, but, you know, I'll make do with what I can. At least they're, they're relatively nice. Oh, a, lot of, a lot of soda drinkers. Or energy drink users. A lot of them. And I guess that's the hot item. No one wants ice cream. There we go, finally. Finally, some people with taste. Oh, no. It's the lunch rush. Oh, dear. Why am, I, why am I doing this? This isn't so. This one isn't too bad, really. It's 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 the frenzy one that's gonna be a, a big pain, actually, like for real. Oh, I tried to get that one. Didn't quite. So I won't get the full point bonus for having a a full satisfaction. But no wrong orders. 31 consecutive. That's not bad. And it's actually... It's just a little bit more than my other high score. Wow, that's kind of surprising. And we get a little bit of money. As you can see, I have way more money than I, than I could ever need. So if we go back to selecting difficulty... We'll try Frenzy Gig. You can, as you can see, the score is way lower. Um... I don't know how I beat this before. Because having to bounce between four distinct things is pretty rough, but also the customer satisfaction goes down so fast. And then, oh no, I messed up. I went too fast. And like, it takes forever for them to actually show things off, and if you have to go from one end to the other, it's a pain. Like, that that's kind of the issue, I think, with this game, is that it just takes so long to get from one end to the other sometimes. If you want to stay more in the middle, but obviously you can't always do that. And that's not good. I didn't get to fill it before Lunch Rush. The Lunch Rush goes down so fast in Frenzy. It was like he was mad that I didn't get the thing instantly. Man, this is this is true to life. I guess because you, you can move in between giving people things. Oh no, well, yeah, I got some bad orders there too, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh dear, my Yelp review is going to be awful. But yeah, that's Frenzy Gig. <laughs> um, and it's by beating that that you get the uh, trophy from the cafe manager. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, yeah, that's all I really want to show there. And as far as other mini games, 
I know I showed off initially uh, the, the tilt and roll Kirby. But I never show off extra hard because I didn't beat the, the hardest one. All extra hard really does is take away the, the little safety dividers and then add some uh, Gordos. I'll show this one off just to kind of demonstrate. But if you touch the Gordo, it's an instant failure. So, and of course this is the easy one, so not that much of a pain, but we'll see if I can actually do this one <laughs> on camera or not. Probably not. Not with my luck. There we go. But you see my best time was was a bit faster than that. And you get extra coins for doing the extra hard, but that's, that's it. Um, we have to back out to show the other ones, though, which is kind of weird. But yeah, the, the extra hard one for this one... So yeah, they take out the, the top ones, and then allow those Gordos just to kind of run rampant. Um, I'll try it. We'll see how far I get. I'm just doing the one try, though. As you can see, it also costs just a little bit more to actually uh, to actually try these in the first place. So this can start... Yep, there we go. So there you go. This, this can beat through your, your money if you really want to. And then here's the one I never beat on the initial run. I swear, see, I beat it initially, but then they take all those safety ones away <laughs> and add this, and I've never beaten this one on this file. Um, you get a lot of coins for it. I will try it once for, for you guys, because, you know, I care about you guys. Maybe one more, where I don't just immediately die right away. That, that would probably be good. But yeah, um, this one's tough. Uh, you got to really master the, the physics here. This this is precisely why I don't want to show... Okay, we're done. I don't want to show the whole thing because it's just, it's just constant failure. Apparently, if you beat all extra hards, you'll get, I think, three rare stones, which, I mean, you can get those from doing anything, so... Not the worst thing in the world, honestly. But, uh, yeah. And then, lastly, I just want to show off my times for uh, the Colosseum over here. Just in general, so like, I only played like the Midnight Cup a few times. You know, got that down to like three. I never went back here with like all the extra equipment and power ups and stuff though. I uh, only did Ultimate Cup once, that was like seven minutes. And then here's my Ultimate Cup Z1. So like, the 13 minutes was the first time I ever cleared this on, on this file for the first time. And I don't know how I only did a little bit faster with all those extra upgrades, but, um,. I was able to finally get under 10 minutes for uh, a recent one with just a, a strength power up. But yeah, that, that's kind of my my uh, thing there. I'd have, to, I'd have to compare it to the other file, but uh, you know, I, I know I'm probably nowhere close to world record. In fact, from what I understand, um, world record uh, people are using toy hammer because if you fully max it out. Um, it has like just it's just faster than the other hammers despite being you know a, a lower stage like it, it does more damage per hit and I guess the way the game calculates like damage um, with like the mast hammer it does multi hits and uh, that will trigger like bosses second phases like they'll it'll have a, like a cap on how much damage you can really do I suppose so. I, I guess that's the, the that's the meta for right now. We'll see if there's any balance changes or something later. But um, I don't think I, I don't know if I showed this off before either. But uh, DED will also actually respond if you emote to him. Not if you sit though, or look around. So that's that's wave. He'll wave. That's that's cute. That's nice. But. Um, the last thing to really show off, though, I think, to, to be as thorough as at least I can be right now, um, is all the gotcha stuff. Right down here. Never really went over here. But, uh, you know, here's all four gotcha machines. You know, Volume 1 just costs 10 uh, coins for a single crank. Excuse me, Volume 2 is 20. Volume 3 is 50. And then a grand total of 100 for Volume 4. And as you can see, we've got all the little ribbons. I have gotten all of them. Uh, so there's that. And with that said, uh, I will show you 
just, I'll just go through an abridged bit of the, the collection, because I don't think it's the most interesting thing in the world to look at all of them. But uh, there are 256 in the game, as you can see. And, uh, you know, just going in order, there's a lot of the ones you'd expect to see. You know, Kirby and Alphalin, Bandana, Wildy, all them, all the powers. Then we start getting all the mouthful modes. You know, everyone's favorite. And then we start to go into the, the uh, enemies here. You know, pretty pretty basic stuff. Like, I, there's like most of these don't even like new enemies will get a a uh, little blurb, but all the old ones really don't, which is a little a little disappointing. You know, I, I like having that that flavor text, but um, as far as ones to really highlight, there's not really that many from Volume One, honestly. Although, like, it's mostly the the all these crown ones are the ones that you get for doing specific things. So I can show those off quick. So this is for Cafe Manager, Cafe Staff Kirby. So he's taking a side gig at the counter, dressed like a focused employee, but he's secretly fighting the urge to gobble up every day. I thought that was going to say something different. But uh, that's his greatest struggle, not eating your food. You know, I mean, good, good on Kirby for having self-control. Fishing Pond Kirby for getting the gold blipper. Doing a bit of fishing at the old fishing pond. He's, he's a little little too relaxed, though. We got that bling blipper, so Kirby's sitting pretty. It's a very cute figure. Wise Wildy is for just talking to him enough, which I think we got in the other file. With his great big book of everything that he somehow knows all. That book somehow has an internet connection. I don't, I don't know how that works. The Delivery Deity, which is just doing enough present codes, which I think we also did. Kirby's handwriting is not very good, but he's trying, so that's, that's important. I think uh, Kirby Fighters 2 mentions that Kirby doesn't know how to write, so I guess he, is, he has learned how to write in between those games, so that's, that's the real character development we're here for. Here's Cafe Staff, which... I don't know what this one's from, actually. If it's just a random one, or... Maybe you get both when you do the uh, Cafe minigames, I could be on... I, I'm not entirely sure. And then, oh, there's still two more. The Game Shop Wally, that's for just beating the base versions of all three Tilt and Roll Kirby's. And apparently we can blame the other Wallies for adding extra hard. So I'll do I'll do that, how dare they. And the Item Shop Wally, which is just buying enough stuff from him. Oh, I, think, I think the other one was buying enough food, that's what it was. So this one, I think we got this one as well. So that, that's nice. You know, there, there's the uh, Gory Mondo. Um, I think we, we we got this one before, but yeah, he eats fruit. That's a, it's a big problem. And then there's these right here, I guess. Uh, car shop signs. So this is talking about whole line, custom auto, and you know, whole line is quality. We can't forget that. The arrival mall sign. Making life even livelier. And then the Lytron work sign. So yeah, Hal, again. Just I know I've mentioned that before, but... And many rival companies in heated corporate battles. That could be a Planet Robobot reference. It's hard to say. I'm not a, I'm not a lore expert. So moving to, to Volume 2 here. Um, you know, more copy abilities like the later ones. We start to get into some of the evolutions. And all of the all of the copy ability blurbs are actually on there. If you just go to the uh, Weapon Smith, it's just right on their thing. If you were to read them, so you're not really getting anything new out of it, unfortunately. Still, it's nice to have them though. Other mouthful stuff. There's all, all these different rings that you can get for Kirby. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, this little guy gets a. Why can't the Animal Sand sculpture get a blur? We need that flavor text. And then all the other enemies. What are these guys called? The Bloon Meisters. That's a weird name for seals, but sure. Diga. That, that's always that's a favorite of mine. I like that, that name a lot. And then these guys, we didn't know for the longest time. These are Nocodiles. So, yeah. Just look at their little stubby legs. All the, all the little ghosties. 
Spook Step, Fanta. I think Fanta's been around before, but I don't remember these guys. They're squishy. If you if you've ever played Kirby's Avalanche, you know all about squishy. Wolf. I'm wondering maybe not every new enemy gets gets a blurb. That or maybe I just don't recognize some of these guys. Glunk. That's what these guys were called. I couldn't I could never remember. And then they even start like here's a little poly crab and like all these other little enemies and stuff that you would never see. The little bit the lost ducklings. Very cute. All that food down there, all those low poly food. <laughs> it's very cute. The item or the capture roulette that's only used like twice in one level and never again. You know, gotta make a figure of that. Um And then the Wandaria statue, there's a little bit of lore, I guess. Named after its founder, an author who wrote stories about a dog that explores outer space. It made a theme park. And I don't know if I mentioned this before, but like, this seems like another overt HAL reference because HAL's logo is a dog with a bunch of eggs, and these are egg-shaped dogs. So sure, you know, why not? And then also these guys, one dog and Wandy, going through space, having all f sorts of fun adventures. And then... Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, these guys, unfortunately, do not get a, uh, a blurb. But the, the mini-bosses do. You know, Wild Bonkers. Loves that he finally has some common enemies that he can mess around with. Florina. She, she's got a very, very popular dance career. Wild Edge. Which... Used to be called uh, Gigant Edge. I I I just want to know: Is this thing even an animal? Like, it's like the only like non-animal thing the Beast Pack took in, apparently, which is just kind of weird. Maybe that's you know things are best left unanswered. Oh, and then the other bosses here. I don't think I actually got Tropic Woods before. So fresh ocean air and warm sunlight help Tropic Woods grow big and strong. Got some giant coconuts. Uh. They're very delicious. Apparently, you can actually suck those up as Kirby and spit them out for big damage, which I never thought to do ever when, during the, the copyless ability run. But, um, yeah, I really don't feel like going to do that now. <laughs> it's a little, little, little late. And then here's Clawrolin. Try to cut our adventure short. Put a contact for the Beast Pack's boss, but she couldn't resist the chance to track Kirby down herself. And she is the idol of the Beast Pack. She has many fans, especially on the internet. Going to Volume 3 now. <laughs> Let's ignore that. A few more abilities, all starting to get into the, the stronger evolutions. Yet again, even more mouthfuls. We, we know this at this point, I think. There's the uh, the homemade dance part, which, okay. You can actually look a little closer, and you actually see Kirby in the background looking. You can zoom a little bit more. I just want to get a closer look at this thing, because I actually think this is pretty, like, impressive craftsmanship. We have what looks to be like like an old buoy or something, maybe, and then some paddles and a broom, a witch hat put on the bottom of it. Um, it's on like a little, like, I don't know, like a dolly or something to roll around. You know, got, we got a, got a uh, parasol face, those lifeless dead eyes that look like, looks like they got pokeballs on them. You know, I'll give Silly Dillo credit. He's a, he's an artist, you know. And then there's the paper mache uh, alpha loon, which is cute. Very simplistic. Not nearly as uh, inspired, though. I would say. And then the Kirby, which I think is actually very nice. So we have a, what looks to be a beach ball that was painted. Some sticks just thrown on there, and then just some some uh, soda cans. A button eye and a and a. Uh, yeah, that Kirby, that's you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't, I don't like Kirby being this close. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little creepy. But yeah, that's that's the homemade Kirby. These guys, excuse me, sorry, it's um, poison Crocum. Yeah, I think I mentioned that before. That like I thought they were something else, <laughs> bull bullfrags or something. I, I that must be something else. I, I just I couldn't remember. Pacto. So here's Snacker. Uh, you know, I've mentioned that before. That is the name. I like this description here. 
Some of the things it tries to swallow seem unreasonably large, but its stretchy body allows it to gulp them down. Why does that sound familiar? Does Kirby is Snake? Who can say, really? These are Totenga, not, not Pokey, but whatever. Mumbies, Primal a Woofy, which I think I was calling them Wild a Woofies for the longest time. They're Primal. Very aggressive. Yet, yet again, this is <laughs> this is a three star. Why why is this a th why is this gotta be a thing? The arches, a lizard. Look at it. It's beautiful. Why why did they do this? I don't know. Uh, anyway, backing up. You know, the snow sculpture. All this all this extra food. All the items. You know, this scroll here. Kirby can't do much because he can't read. But Wildy can read, thankfully. We got Meta Knight. Which I don't think we got that one before. So Meta Knight was brought here uh, a little before Kirby, it looks like. And he decided to help Wildy Town and become their protector. Which is really great, you know? He's a stand-up guy. Here's Deity. He arrived shortly before Kirby. He joined forces with the Beast Pack, but that's no excuse for his mistreatment. I mean, why, why would you do this? His gown's all, all decked out now. He's way, way stronger somehow. Who can say why? It totally isn't because of a big space alien controlling him or anything. Here's Silly Dillo. He's an incredible dancer, as long as it didn't involve spinning. Nocturnal. He has something important to do, but he doesn't know what, what it is. And I'm just going to make you all just look. Just look at him. That's the thumbnail. That's probably going to be the... Th <laughs> I don't know what the thumbnail is going to be for this, but... There you go. And then finally, Volume 4, which is... If you notice, we keep getting less and less figures. And a huge chunk of Volume 4 is actually locked behind doing the post-game stuff. Like they, they either can't be obtained until you've beaten it, because they won't be in the roulette where you have to do specific things in the post-game. We have all the evolutions. I just want to read this quick. Yeah, that, Again, like I wish these were a little more. I, I, I miss the pause screen flavor text for, for the copy abilities, but it can't be helped. We got all those. Got uh, Morpho Knight Swords actually interesting. I think I... Yeah, I read this before, but yeah, it's just, you know, Kirby can somehow wield this dangerous weapon totally easily because he's way stronger than it. We have the big rig that saved the day, which... Let's get a closer look at this craftsmanship here. Very rusty and <laughs> dirty. It's, Kirby, why did you gotta put your mouth over this? And then, um, big rig mouth... To save two worlds, Kirby's final mouthful must be his biggest. He's totally fine. Go, Kirby. Carry your and Elphalan's combined hope for the future. Race through the sky and deliver the final blow. It's, it's so majestic. And then if we look all the way back... I like that Kirby's feet could almost be interpreted as, like, turn signals or something. <laughs> it's very cute. And then I think we have all of the, yeah. This was a big, just, yeah, big red Tortilding. The boss of all the Tortildings. And he, he likes a suitably sweltering spot. And this one's very cute. They, they give this one a blurb. The scent of pine that lingers on this Wolfie's favorite napping spot. Very cute. That's probably a plush design. You can see the little toe beans and everything. There's probably a Wolfie merch in Japan that we'll never get. All right, let's start with some of these other ones. So a lot of these start to have some blurbs and stuff that are important. The Ranger's Great Discovery. The new world is filled with danger and temptation. Any unexpected detour during your adventure lead to a mountain of treasure. But how many other surprises are there? I mean, a lot. That's just a random one, though. I think I don't think that's tied to anything. Here's a duel with Meta Knight. Did some early scouting. He apparently got to Winterhorn's way before us. 
his battle Gorimondo 30 times and won every bout. That's crazy. Good on you, man. I... Destined Rivals. Planet Popstar's Destined Rivals. That's how King Dedede usually describes this special relationship. So he was crestfallen when he arrived in the New World and couldn't find Kirby. By the time they finally met, Dedede had changed from friendly rival to menace. That's the interesting thing about Dedede. He's, he's like the antagonist of the first game, and pretty much from that point on, it becomes established that he's usually well-meaning. But um, he has to fight Kirby anyway. He, he's, he's, he's the Virgil to Kirby's, you know... Dante, it's kind of it's kind of crazy, but then Mad Knight's also the Virgil. It's can can Kirby really afford to have two rivals like that? It seems kind of very odd. Although honestly, both of them suck things up, and Deity learned that because he wanted to, and he also learned how to puff up because he wanted to put one over on Kirby. So maybe they are the true rivals. We adventure together. Bandana Waldy and Alphalum have joined Kirby's victory dance. Yeah, it's a shame I'll never really show off, um... <laughs> I didn't really get to show off, uh, Bandana Wally at all. Just don't have extra controllers lying around, don't have another person to show things off. I mean, I could, but it would just be kind of sad. And, you know, they're really pushing Elphil, it makes you wonder if they'll bring him back. The Rare Stone Master, which I think I did show that off last time, for getting all the treasure roads. Which is a very nice, hey, congrats for doing all that stuff. Weapon Shop as well, I think we also went over when we got the Morpho Knight Sword. All that all that elbow grease really paid off. He, he's, a, he's a trooper. The Commentator, we also, I believe, got him with the Ultimate Cup. The Usher, this is from the Theater, which I never, I think, really showed off. But, um... You get this for getting every movie, which is only possible by doing everything in the main game and then beating Ultimate Cup Z, because there's cutscenes there, and he'll just give it to you right away. But, um, if you ever need the cutscene viewer, just go in the movie theater. Because movies are important, it's the first thing they rebuilt. The Deedly Ds are, you know, this is their fully upgraded, uh, stage. They start off with a wah-wah, and they, they want to make you feel good about music and stuff. Apparently their, their band meetings can get very heated. I, I'd, I'd love to see that, actually. I can't wait to see the documentary years later when they all broke up and went their separate ways. Here's the f primal nemesis Forgo deity. So why did he kidnap Evelyn? He said he was being controlled even before some strange people put that mask on. I'm, I'm kind of curious with the mask thing, because okay, here's the thing. It's become tradition that, Kur that deity puts a mask on, I think since Superstar Ultra, he puts on a mask and fights you in a steel cage match. Um, and so it's become a common thing, but like, no one else in the game really has a mask over them. Like, very strange. But hey, it looks cool, I guess. Here's Leon Gar. He's become a pawn for an invading specimen from beyond the stars. Poor guy. At least he got a cool cape out of the deal, though. I mean, that's that's not all bad. Here's Fecto Forgo Larva form. When IDF-86 arrived, it began attacking all of the native wildlife. The creature was captured soon after and turned into a test subject. The native inhabitants used it to create tech beyond their wildest dreams. They eventually used that tech to leave the planet altogether, but IDF-86 remained forgotten and fractured. Let's just look at this gross thing really quick. <laughs> Ugh. I don't like it. Kirby doesn't care, though. He will look on uncaring. Invasive species Fecto Forgo. The invading species, alone and completely without Elphalan, was trapped in the Eternal Capsule. Their only refuge was the realm of their dreams. Those dreams spread powerful waves of psychic energy all over the world, slowly taking control of the animals they reached. Escape would require more energy. So that's the main explanation for why it was controlling things. Its dreams are just too strong. And if we look at this thing... <laughs> so we got what looks to be that, that frog up top. I can't tell what this thing is kind of in the upper middle there. I don't know if that would be... 
I don't think it's like that sea, sea lion at all. Leongar's clearly right there. We've got a bunch of snakes, a bunch of snackers. There's a digger right at the bottom there. There's the the crocodile. There's, I think, a wolfie and then the rabbit. Yeah, I can't tell. Oh, is that supposed... Oh, no, that's not supposed to be uh, frosty, is it? I think it is, because I can kind of see the mustache. Oh, God. And there's nothing behind. It actually kind of looks like a face for a second. Let me know in the comments if you see a face right there for the engagement. So let's see, what else we got? Ultimate life form, Fecto Elphilus. The Elphilin we first met was born from a small, compassionate soul that hid behind greater, invasive ambitions. Without a soul to temper its power, the creature's spatial teleportation ability ran amok, opening mysterious vortices left and right. Now that they're whole again, they're already planning their next invasion. I know we read this before, but I wanted to read it again anyway. Another thing to point out, though, is that, uh... Oh, is this not... Hmm. People said the eyes follow you around when you rotate it. Either, either they're making they're making things up, or that's chaos, FLOs. Let's see. Well, here's all the phantom ones first. This illusionary beast. It's not the real one, but it still loves fruit. It has an anchor as a necklace now instead of the uh, cage. Illusionary fronds, Tropic Woods. Phantom is the form of Tropic Woods has grown seriously strong under the illusionary sunlight of Forgo Dreams. Do you think it's coconuts or illusions too? I wonder what they taste like. Use your imagination. Say, so even though this is not a member of the Beast Pack, it still got affected by all that dream stuff. There is Phantom Chloralin. The real Chloralin asked Kirby to help her save Leongar. This phantom feline's a fake. Formed from negative thoughts and powerful psychic energy, this wild beast doesn't seem to care about Leongar at all. She may be an illusion, but her claws will cause real damage. Phantom Deity. It's an illusion of the king based on memories of his embarrassing turn under IDF-86's control. Forced to work for Leongar and capture Elphalan. It has no memory of Kirby or the adventures they've shared. It's a little more than a haughty, hollow husk. Damn. It's pretty messed up. Phantom Silly Dillo. Uh, so, he, he, he just wants to dance still. That's pretty much it. Not much to really go off of. Here's Phantom at Night. The lone illusionary foe that you encountered outside of Forgo Dreams. Yeah, why, why is that? When Fecto Forgo tried to control Man Knight like a head king deity, the experienced swordsman came out on top through sheer force of will. But the result was this mysterious doppelganger formed by the residual psychic energy. Yeah, the, the, like the one game where Man Knight doesn't actually get possessed for once. I like that sword swipe, that looks cool. Not a bad uh, color scheme either. Very tropical. Yeah, usually Man and I and Deity get forced into boss fights, but um, I guess Man Knight's had enough of that. Phantom Forgo Deity. This was formed when Leongar gave the already controlled King a mask to further cloud his mind. This phantom copy is based on memories of his terrifying turn is somehow even stronger and more dangerous. He has magma powers now. It's 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 impossible. Here's an interesting one. Possessed Beast Forgo Leon. The specimen tagged as IDF-86, left formless and floating after a humiliating defeat, fled to Forgo Dreams to plot their next steps, create a new army of phantom beasts, then claim Leongar's body as its own. When Kirby when Kirby arrived to force them out, IDF-86 had no choice but to reveal their own phantom form. Poor Leongar. He really got pretty rough. Fluttering Dreamweaver and Morpho Knight. So this one's interesting. The fluttering fiend that casts judgment upon final battles is drawn towards the isolated isles of Forgo Dreams. There, it feasts on the most powerful soul it finds and takes the fearsome form of a scarlet-clad knight. Let the most challenging battle of this new world begin. So yeah, as before, this thing casts judgment. Um, you know, some people see this as the Grim Reaper of the Kirby universe. Some people see this as like a Valkyrie. 
of of the Kirby universe. I don't think they actually have said one way or another what Morpho Knight's gender is, but um, it's something, all right. I, I look forward to seeing more. And here's a piece of Leon Soul. It's only a three star. <laughs> that must that must hurt. After their fight with Kirby, IDF-86's body was destroyed, but their powerful minds survived. They fled to the isolated isles of their own dreams and brought Leongar with them. To prepare this new vessel, they cast out Leongar's soul, shattering and scattering it throughout the realm of Forgo dreams. Man. I, just, a three-star just seems so mean. Your own soul can't even be four-star. Wake up, Leon. The soul fragments collected by Kirby and Clawerlin have been returned to their owner. Leongar, now restored as Leon, is free of IDF-86's corrupting mind control. This world is in good pause once again. Isn't that lovely? That that gets to be five star. Only because Clawerlin's there. And here's Leon and Carol. These two were the famous leaders of the Animal Kingdom until Leon found IDF-86. After that, he began speaking in a language Carol couldn't understand. She only speaks in meows. And formed the Brutal Beast Pack. She still believed in him. So she formed a new identity of her own and followed along. And yeah, that, that I think we I've read that before when we got it. But, you know, that's, this is the best power couple in all of Kirby right there. Okay, here we go. Species born of Chaos, Chaos Ephelus. A unique convergence of elements, from native beast souls to ethereal butterfly gave a stubborn soul one last chance at revenge. This new creation, driven by pure chaos, was defeated by the bright light of Kirby's hope. The last bit of life that remained willingly returned to Elphalin. At last, two became one. Is this the one where the eyes will follow? Yes, the, eye are, the eyes will follow us as we rotate around. Not creepy at all. Not creepy at all. Jeez. That's actually pretty unsettling. <laughs> um, that's a good design, though. I, Elphilus is cool. You know, he's more than just Kirby-shaped with, no, with like floating limbs that a lot of other enemies have been. Was that the last one? It was the last one. And we're back to where it began. So that's full circle. So yeah, that's all the figures. Um, you know, most of these were just RNG. You just eventually get them by popping enough money in or getting them in levels, but, you know, some of those ones you had to work a little harder for. But uh, that's pretty much, that's the major thing, actually. If I, let me, I'm going to actually stop and go back here. I want to compare our, our uh, files really quick before we go. I'm totally not stalling. So, we're 5% off from from the base file here. And I'm trying to think, I think I need a, I get a percentage point for doing the, um, the frenzy gig in the other file and for beating the, uh, the final tilt and roll Kirby before you unlock extra hearts. So that's like two percentage points. But then... The rest of that is just getting all of the figures. So the figures are probably the, the biggest um, time sink, actually. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I got for Kirby, I think. As much as I would like to play more, there's not really much more to play. I really enjoyed this game a lot. I hope people have enjoyed watching it. You know, if, if you watch this all the way to the end, I appreciate it a lot. You know, I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, it's nice to share a game that you really enjoy. The year's still pretty early. There's a lot of games left uh, in the year. But for right now, this is my game of the year. It's probably going to be pretty high up there, honestly. I just really enjoyed everything this game brought to the table. It's very polished. It's, it's you know, I could always say that it could be a little longer. But I think the game did pretty much all it needed to do with the time it had and it doesn't really it's not really overly padded it's not taking you know taking way too long to get to the good stuff it felt pretty well paced 
with a fair amount of stuff to do. I don't know if we're going to get more stuff, like more DLC or not. I wouldn't mind it, but the game doesn't really need it. Whereas I thought Star Allies kind of did need it. And at this point, uh, we are, to, to date myself a bit, we're, I think, almost two months out of this game being around. And we have gotten the initial sales, and I think this was... It was in the running for being the best Kirby uh, launch, I think, ever. In With just like a week of uh, sales data. I think it was like... I want to say it was like 2 point something million or something like that. But uh, I have high hopes this will this will sell pretty well, and the franchise will continue to you know do bigger and better things. Uh, you know, people still go nuts with all of the speculation. You know, people are saying that you know the uh, the people that left this forgotten land are the ancients that are mentioned in Return to Dreamland. Uh, there's all this talk of whether or not okay, we met Morpho Knight for real. Is that going to be significant moving on? Uh, are we ever gonna like explore, you know, what happened to the agents? You know, what's Shiverstar all about? What was was that another place the agents agents went to? Were the ancients uh, humans or were they something completely different? You know, like people people go nuts with this stuff, right? Like, you, you look at the left here, you got that star-shaped purple portal, which was also in uh, Return of Dreamland, and that's something that you know Elphilus could do a lot of, and people are speculating that you know. Either I can't remember the, the race of, of the creatures in that, like the Halcyons or something like that. People are wondering if either the Halcyons are the ancients that just copied Elphilus's powers, or if they're also like Elphilus. It's it's hard to really say. Kirby, Kirby doesn't really care that much about lore. I think at the end of the day, they 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 want to have fun first, but then they'll sprinkle that lore in for people that actually love it. But uh, I would love to see a Kirby game that's a little more in-depth with this stuff. Maybe they, they ever make an RPG someday, like a real one, not like the eShop ones. <laughs> but yeah, I've blabbed enough. This is this video is long enough as it is. There might be more things people are going to discover, you know, or you know, whatever down the line. If there's DLC that's significant enough, I will possibly cover it in another video. I don't know if I'm going to do more Kirby stuff in the future. I'm, if you look at my channel, I know it's mostly just like action games, it's mostly fighting games at this point, but um, every so often if there's a game like that that really catches my fancy and it's not that big of a pain to record, I'll do it. You know, Wonderful 101 is a game I like a lot, but it became apparent working on it that the game's pretty beefy. It's really hard to be comprehensive, and I just kind of cut my losses and quit early because I didn't think I was going to be able to really do do the best give it the best you know spotlight i guess but you know i felt better with this one you know maybe kirby's more my speed at the end of the day maybe if bayonetta 3 comes out and it's pretty good i i might do that to complete my coverage of that so we'll see but with that said uh thanks once again for watching uh hope you enjoyed this hope maybe you, you picked up kirby yourself and liked it and uh you know, hopefully in a few more years we'll have another great Kirby game grace our lives and everything can be great for a little while. So thanks again and take care.